In the beginning of October, we went apple picking at our favorite Yupik apple orchard. We picked over 85 pounds of apples, about 60 pounds of Fuji apples, and the rest were golden delicious apples. We're going to freeze dry them. Also, our new apple peeler arrived. We'll peel some of the apples to use in pies and sauces, and leave the rest unpeeled for snacking right out of the bag. Okay, our ascorbic acid got here, and we had citric acid, so I'm mixing them 50-50 as a replacement for the fruit fresh. The fruit fresh is uh, dextrose, so a sugar, and then ascorbic acid and citric acid. And the concentration on this is only about one-eighth of this. So then after I mix it 50-50, I'm going to use it in the water for the apples to keep them from turning brown during freezing and then freeze drying. So mix that and then I'll put a tablespoon of that in three quarts of water for the apple slices. A tablespoon of this of the citric acid ascorbic acid mix and put a tablespoon to about three quarts of water uh, for the apple slices. And then I'll add a quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon uh, anytime I dip the apples out and put new apples in. So anytime I fill it up and, and empty it. This was our box of golden delicious apples. And pull it in there. Alright, that's nice. I'll do a review video of the new apple peeler soon, and I'm going to compare it to our old peeler. And we won't peel all the apples. Uh, usually when we're freeze drying we don't peel them. But after the time of making the pie uh, filling, or making the apple pie from the freeze dried, we know we want some of them peeled so that we can save them for pies and fillings. And I'm going to leave the apples in as big a piece as I can. Well, halves probably. This is a very full bowl of peeled Golden Delicious apples. We let them soak for a couple of minutes, and then I drain them a bit before putting them on baking sheets to pre-freeze and await their turn in the freeze dryer. All right, just kind of spread these out a bit, and these will go in the freezer for pre-freezing. And then uh, these will end up being bagged in Ziplocs until I'm ready for freeze drying them. Each time I empty the bowl of apples, I add a bit more of the ascorbic and citric acid mixture for keeping the apples fresh looking. We did all the golden delicious apples before we moved on to the Fujis. See it better. Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Okay, back to slicing the apples. Using the laser makes it easy to line up the center of the core in the apple peeler. Voila! That one has a core in it. <laughs> okay, so sometimes if the core is bigger, it leaves part of it inside. So what I've been doing is get rid of the pieces that don't have that issue. And then you can just take a, a scoop and just scoop out the little bit of 
Core. No muss, no fuss. Oh, we've got a bowl full of apples that have been peeled, cored, or not peeled, uh, cored and sliced. And then we've quartered them and put them into the, the bath of ascorbic acid and uh, citric acid. Now we're going to just drain them a little bit. And I'm just going to spread them out on cookie sheets to pre-freeze for the freeze dryer. Okay, I'm just spread these out and put them in the freezer to pre-freeze and then if the freeze dryer trays are empty I can put them on the freeze dryer trays and if not I can pop them out of there and just put them in um, plastic zipper bags and till the freeze dryer is ready. That's it, just continue on with those. Okay, with the apples sliced and on the trays, they can go into the freezer for pre-freezing. Okay, and you can see I already have other trays in there, and they're just separated by the corrugated plastic sheets. And then those are ready, those will be ready uh, by tomorrow, or when the freeze dryer is ready. And you can hear the freeze dryer running in the background, and I already have another three trays and another three trays worth of apples already pre-frozen uh, and then I transfer them into two gallon bags. I get the question pretty much every time that I show pre-freezing, why not just put them directly onto the freeze dryer trays and into the freeze dryer and avoid that. Um, but that's why, because I have six or eight batches waiting to be freeze-dried right now of the apples and I've already done three batches in the freeze dryer or the third batch is in the freeze dryer right now. Cookie sheets of apples had a chance to freeze completely. Now I'm going to transfer them into uh, zipper bags until the freeze dryer is ready for that batch. I failed to dry the apple slices with a paper towel before I put them on the baking sheets, so they really stuck together this time. In the two gallon bag, I can get about three cookie sheets full, which is enough for an entire freeze dryer batch. So by the time I'm done, I'll have half a dozen of these bags waiting for freeze drying. Okay, I have a batch of apples in the freeze dryer right now, and at least six batches waiting in the freezer pre-freezing or pre-frozen. And they should be done tomorrow morning, and then I can put some of the ones that they just put in the freezer can go into the freeze dryer. The next day, I'm going to take these out of here. I'm going to open the drain valve. Let the air in. And get these out of there. Those are beautiful. And the little quarter slice pieces. Okay, I'm going to leave this running until I confirm that it's dry. Okay, so on the little cart, I'll roll it over to the bagging area and get them bagged up. So all the trays of apples are dry now. Uh, I've got the half slices, the quarter slices, and then two trays of the full rounds. So I'm going to bag them separately, though it doesn't really matter. 
In the past, most of what we did were the quarter slices, just because it's quick and easy. But these look really nice. Wow, those are delicious. So these are the Golden Delicious. We'll get to bagging these. So I've got the bags labeled, got the batch number, what it is, the day that it went into the freeze dryer. And then after it's bagged with the oxygen absorber, I'll weigh it and put a total weight at the bottom, a gross weight, so I'll know if it ever has a problem with pulling in moisture. So these are the little quart bag ones, which are slightly less than a quart, but I really like these for a lot of things. So we get a good amount in a scoop, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, that does a nice job in the bag. It just doesn't seem like very much in, the, in a bag, but when you see this amount right here, I mean, that's plenty for a nice snack. And these are the seven mil Mylar bags with the gusseted bottom. And I really like these. And I just have a few more hundred of them that don't have the rounded corners. Then they have the rounded corners, which is nice too. Okay, it looks like I could get a little bit more in there. So I'm gonna toss a couple more in there. There. So now the half slice ones. Mm. Wow. Those are just excellent. Going to bag some of these in the two quart bag. And there's plenty for sharing. I don't know if these will go in there. I don't know if these will go through there because these are pretty big. There we go. Got enough to share in that size bag. So, got these nice round slices. These are beautiful rounds. Okay, there's a whole one. That's pretty neat. Wow. Okay, those are delicious. With the apples in there, I'm going to add oxygen absorbers. So I've got the oxygen absorbers. I'll add one to each bag. So close them and then I'll use the heat sealer and seal them all. So we've got the heat sealer at the end of the table and go ahead and heat seal them all. Okay, a nice good seal. So kind of smooth the bag top and seal near the end. And if you're not a hundred percent sure that it's sealed well, then you can go ahead and, and seal it again. You've got plenty of room to do two or three times even. I have one more I need to do. So I had 11 bags in there, so I need one more oxygen absorber. And there's the little sensor, the little indicator. To, uh, it's a nice pink. When it's exposed to the oxygen, it'll turn purple. So I'm going to cut this open. Take one out, put it in there, reseal this bag. 
and that'll be ready for the next nine. Nine, so that I know that there's nine in that one. All right, got them. The other thing I decided to add is the total weight. So I've got the batch number, the date that it went in the freeze dryer, what it is. Now, I want to put on it the total weight, the gross weight of the whole thing. So this is 94 grams, and I'm just going to put 94 grams right in the bottom corner. So now I know I can just put it on the scale and find out if it's changed. They should never change, and that's part of the, the point. 101 grams, 